Hello everyone, it's Sheila back again. Welcome to my channel. I am busy knitting the left front on the the little blackberry cardigan that I'm doing for uh, Helen. I finished the back. I got the back done there. And that's one of the fronts, the left front actually, that I'm doing. <coughs> I'll not take too much longer for that one and then there'll be the three little hats that I have to do after that. But this one here, I've given up knitting of a night time. Once um, I have to put the light on in my living room, this one goes down because I cannot knit. Even with the neck light, I can see the stitches to knit across when I'm knitting across on um, just the ordinary rows because you do five rows of just knit rows and pearl rows but when it comes to the row that you drop the stitch down I was having trouble seeing those stitches even with the, um, the light and I think I knitted one row it was even before the light went on I think it was yesterday before um, before I put the light on, yes. And had knitted across the five, the five below row. And then I come to knit the next row and I could see this one stitch standing up all by itself. It wasn't attached to the knitting. And I realized the needle mustn't have went through that stitch. That's it. <laughs> Once the light goes on, I am not knitting any in this color. <laughs> and any other dark color, I will not knit of a night time. So this I'll be knitting until I think it gets about half seven when it starts to get a bit dusky, you know, in the uh, in the house. So, but I'll just finish this row and I'll show you. I've been doing the um, the eyelash one. I'll pick that up and show you how much of that I've done. I took it to the bingo with me. I had just started it yesterday. Not yesterday, Thursday, and I took it to bingo with me on Thursday night. Put that down. And I have got... It's the back and the two fronts done on it, because it's all done in one. It's off my border. I use the border lace pattern cardigan as a, um, a template for this one. I just do it all plain. I just use it for the number of stitches that um, it's nice to be able to knit something from my own pattern that I don't have to work out because it's already been worked out. So I just follow the um, the pattern as though it's all plain. So I'm getting that much done and I've still got that much left of the ball. I've only got the sleeves to do in the neck and I have still have a full ball of this as well. So I'm not sure, um, there might be enough to do another little hat because I did a little hat with this one when I did it the, um, the other one. There was a little hat I did with it and I had thought about doing some little mittens but then I thought no I don't think so afterwards because of that wool with it being I'll pull it off the thing with it being like that I don't know how secure that is to the thing and you know babies do tend to suck the fingers even with gloves on because I know remember my babies when they were little when they were having to wear gloves when you took them off you'd been out somewhere and you took them off the gloves were usually soaking because they'd been sucking them <laughs> so I thought well if those little bits come off they could get caught in the baby's throat so no I won't do a, do a um, a pair of mittens with uh, that. If there's enough to do a hat, I'll do a hat. But I think there might be because um, it doesn't take a lot actually um, to do with the balls of wool. I have one round behind my computer here. <laughs> the balls of wool here have only got um, the 50 grams and it's only 90 meters which is not a lot actually because on a 100 gram ball of ordinary knitting double knitting you usually get um anything up to about 300 
and I'm not sure how many, I'll have a bowl of double knitting, I don't know how many actual metres that is you get on that. I'll have a check and see what's on here. Oh yeah, this was a hard one to find the, <laughs> to find the thing. 274 metres. Yes, you can get anything up to up to 300 metres on the um, the ball and this one's only got 90 metres. But it seems to go a long way actually, even though, that, even though it's only got that 90 metres. It's only took um, a full ball. That was, I had three balls of this, three full balls and a little bit and I used the little bit and it got me just about that much of the hole that was quite wide you know the thing got about that much and I've done the rest of it and I've still got that bit left of the use one ball and then this was the second ball and I've still got that bit left so it does go quite a long way actually so anyway it'll not be long before those ones will be finished and then I'll get on to I'll have three to do for I thought I just had three more orders left to do for Dagri, but I'm checking in my book and I'm not I've got more. Yes, after I finish um, those two, I have three 24 inch ones to do for Dagri. Although I think I might do 26 inch ones for her now because it's quite a while ago since she asked me for those, and that little girl, by the time she gets them, I think she's probably going to need a 26 inch. I might possibly do a bit more than a 24 inch. And then I forgot my old next door neighbour's mother when I gave her the, the last one. She had asked me for some more and I forgot all about them. So I've wrote them down here. So I've got four more to do for her. So she wants, wants me to do two for a three year old, which will probably be another 24 inch she wants. And some just 20 inch for for little boys well the ones I've just done some 18 inch ones for I think he's he's only about four or five months old at the time but she wants them for the winter so I would probably do one or two of my patterns that I'm trying to do um, a PDF on I think when I do the ones for Dagri I think I'll do the 4x4 four four, one of them in the 4x4 four four basket stitch one that'll be another another one to add on to that because I only have a 16 inch on that one at the moment and the little boy sets I think I'll do one of those in that pattern so I'll have a 20 inch so they'll have three sizes on there as well as the the 26 inch one which I already have a PDF for but I think I'm going to do some PDFs um, just in the single sizes of some of these things I've been knitting that I haven't had time to do any more to do any more to add to the PDF sizes to put onto paper pattern. So I might do some PDFs of the single sizes and just put them up but not the paper ones until I've got the whole lot. So I won't be able to sell, do any paper ones to sell until I have all of the sizes on but I will do some in PDFs just the single sizes for the ones that I have done up to now. Because I have quite a few in my book that I've been doing um, just an odd size, same with some of the adult ones, I might do the single size ones I've got for the adult ones that I can put in the, um, into a PDF format as well. <coughs> and anyway I was at my bingo on Thursday night and me and my friend never won anything but I took my, I took the, the knitting of the little, the little pink one, I thought I'm going to do some of that because when we go to the bingo I pick my friend up at 20 past 7. I leave my house about 10 to 7 and it's about 20 past 7 by the time I get to hers and I pick her up and it's less than 10 minutes so it's less than 10 minutes so I'm just saying 10 minutes up the um, the road so we'll get there for half 7 and by the time we settle down get all our books for the bingo and pay for domino cards and this that and the other get our drinks and that and sit down I usually have at least half an hour that's quite boring while you're waiting for the game to stall. Well, my friend, I, I told you in another video, um, she likes likes us to do this um, word game on my phone. And I'm getting a little bit sick of it, actually. I mean, we've been going to that place for probably a year now. And she likes to play this game every time. I think she just likes to play 
because you can beat me to the words. Her mind is quicker than mine for working out words and crosswords and that's why she likes doing it. So I thought to myself, I'm just going to put the phone on the table and I'll put the game on and let her play it and I'm going, just going to sit and knit. I'm not bothered about it. I'm sick of doing that game anyway. So that's what I did. And I think she went a little bit in a huff because I wasn't joining in with her with the, um, the game. And I says, well, you know, I've got half an hour from sitting down. I says, I've got half an hour. I can do quite a bit knitting in half an hour. And then we play a book of games, a, six, a book of six games. And we have a 15 minute break before the next game starts again. You know, they're doing other things and have a 15 minute break for anybody that wants to get up for drinks and things like that. So I think do a little bit more knitting and then we do another book of three games and a flyer and then we'll have another break after that where another 15 minute break and I'm saying that's an hour I can do a lot of knitting in an hour so that's what I did and I did quite a bit of that little, little cardigan but <laughs> my friend did go a little bit huffy though <laughs> and then I was talking to the um, there's two ladies that sit on the table next to us and we always sit at the same tables every week and these two ladies, one's Molly and the other one is Anne, the same name as my friend. And Molly wasn't there this week because she wasn't feeling very well, so there was only Anne. And I was busy when my friend got up. She went to go, went to go eat to talk to somebody else she knew. I think she got sick of just playing the, um, trying to beat herself on the game. <laughs> she got up to talk to somebody else she knew and... Um, and the other lady, the lady on the other table, um, she was leaning over and I was looking at her and I could see she was going like this with her finger. <laughs> she says, Anne, what are you doing? She says, I was actually wearing this cardigan at the time. She says, I'm trying to count the stitches on your cardigan. She says, I love that pattern on your cardigan. Did you make that yourself? And I says, yes, one of my patterns. And she says, do you use a, um, just a plain ladies cardigan pattern and put your own patterns in it because she says that's what I do I like to do it after I've got a just a plain cardigan but I like to put my own patterns in and I says well it's my own design on the cardigan but I says I make up my own patterns as well for the cardigans and that so she says oh she says that's good she says well what's the stitch on your cardigan <laughs> she says is it knit one pearl one for it looks about four rows I says no it's knit one pearl three I says for four rows, I says, and then you alternate that so you put the knit stitch in the middle of the three pearl stitches on the next one, so I was explaining to her. So my friend come back and she wasn't very happy because we were talking about knitting and she's not interested in knitting at all. She knits little things, you know, she has one or two friends. There seems to be a lot of babies born around where she lives. She's always knitting a little baby cardigan for, um, for somebody because I put them things right for her now and again. But she's not as interested in knitting, but this lady, Anne, is... She's a bit like me. She's like a lady after my own heart. Actually, she does the same kind of things I do. And she was saying, well, I would love that pattern, she says, of the cardigan you're wearing, because she says, I can't do the sleeves like you do them, she says. You have to set in sleeves. I can only do raglins. I can't work out the set in sleeve one. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm thinking about trying to do some PDFs for my own patterns. And that's what she says. Um, if I get this one wrote out, I'll bring it in for you. Says, what size are you? She says, well, oh, I think I'm a lot bigger than you. She says, um, I'm a, I do about a 40 to 42 for myself. I says, oh, well, looks are deceiving, Anne, because I says, that's what I do for myself, 40 to 42. <laughs> she says, looks is deceiving. She didn't think, she said, she didn't think I was that size. But I says, I am that size. I says, that's what I do. So I says, whatever I do for myself will be okay for, um, for you. So we were talking and then I had took that little cardigan that I was doing for um, the young girl who was pregnant. Her name is Maria actually, but she wasn't in. <laughs> so I had to bring it back home with me, but um, Anne was looking at that as well and she said, the little flowers I had put on the um, the top, I'd put three little flowers, embroidered three little flowers on the, um, the top of the cardigan and she, oh, I'd love to know how to do that. I says, it's simple, simple. <laughs> I says you just stick 
Yeah, needle, thread a needle with one of that colour you want, stick it through one hole and you just come up and just keep going back and come back through that hole and go up further up and come back through that hole and go further up and then put a different colour. I put a bit green on that, it looked like it was leaves on and that. <laughs> she said, oh me, can you not just write that down? So I says, look there. I might do a, um, a tutorial because I have been asked by one or two of my other subscribers she and I could do a tutorial for how to do the flowers. So I says I might do a, um, a tutorial for my YouTube channel. Oh, you've got a YouTube uh, Yes, I've got a YouTube channel. <laughs> I'll have to tell her how to get on to it so she can subscribe to, um, to me. So I says I'm going to do a tutorial when I get round to it for my other... I've got two channels, I says, for one of my channels. So I says I'll send you the um the little video when i do it and let you you see how it's done so my friend was felt quite right out of it because we were chatting away and then i moved right to the edge of the table so i got closer to the other table where Anne was talking to <laughs> about, the, about the knitting but it's nice to talk to somebody who has the same hobbies it's not just a hobby it's a job with me as well and likes to do the same kind of things and my friend Anne doesn't do anything at all. She's got no hobbies. The only hobby she, what she thinks is a hobby is watching all the soaps on the TV. <laughs> well, I don't watch the soaps. My telly's never been on for months. I just watch an odd film or TV thing on my computer. That's, uh, that's all I do. Or oh, I like to play card games on my computer. You know, Spider Solitaire? <laughs> I finished one the other day, which I've been on for ages, where there are 16 card things you have to get them all up I think the four packs of card things you do I actually did it the other day I've been on weeks trying to do that one <laughs> but anyway I said we never won anything um, but it's just the the fun of some having somebody to talk to and then my friend's telling me that she's managed to get booked up for to go to um, Corfu on the 7th of September so we've got one more week where I'll see her at the um, the bingo. I won't have to pick her up for the next... I'm not sure if it's two or three weeks. It depends what day she comes back. Cause she always goes away for a couple of um, weeks. And she's going away on a Thursday, so she could be possibly coming back on a Thursday. So I'll drink a bit of my tea before it gets cold too. But the other lady... And we were talking to her. She was asking me how I got on to about knitting. Because she said she's knit since she was a child as well. And uh, she does a little bit of crochet as well. And I told her, I says, well, it was my dad that actually taught me how to um, knit. But um, I says, my mother was a, um, a good knitter as well. But I says, um, at the time I was knitting, I says, my, my father was a steel erector. I said, my mother was a tailoress and a dressmaker. She used to work for Isaac Walton's in Newcastle when we were kids. And that was, she only worked there at the time because my father was a steel erector and he'd had an accident and he'd fell off the um, the roof and he was on the, um, the sick for quite a long time, actually. And my mother had to go back to work because I think I was about, about six at the time, I think, when it happened. I would have been about six. My younger sister, Linda, would have been two and a half to three, something like that. And my older sister, Eleanor, because there's three and a half years between us, the three of us. So Eleanor would have been about nine, nine and a half, something like that. But my dad was on um, the sick for quite a long time and my mum was working, I think. I remember her saying, um, my younger sister Linda still had to go to school. So she must have talked about this later on af afterwards and said that um, she used to finish early, start late and finish early. So she was there for, for me and my older sister to go to school. But she still had to look after my younger sister and then she had to be there for us coming back. So she could only work to a certain time and she had somebody looking after my younger sister and then as we got a little bit older, and I think as my dad was starting to get a bit better, he could get back to work. It must have been a couple of years passed by then. Because I remember my mum saying that she was going to start working full time again. And that our older sister Eleanor would be picking us up from school. Would be taking us to school in the morning and picking us up at tea time. And my mother would be in later on to do the... Uh, 
the meals and that and um Anyway, you know, I'm getting on about how, how I learned to knit and that. And uh, from that age of about six, my dad taught me how to um, how to knit. But uh, my mother taught me, you know, all the basic things to do with um, knitting, how to cast on and how to do shaping and all the, um, the rest of it. Well, at the time, how I started working out patterns for myself, I see it was I had dolls, you know, and I wanted to knit things for dolls, for dolls' clothes and things. There's one I was probably about around about eight by this time. And I wasn't sure how to work things out, but my mum told me how to measure the doll properly and how many stitches you had to put on, how you had to work out your tension, she used to say, and and as she couldn't afford to buy at the time, because of my dad being out of work and um her not working full time at the time. We couldn't afford little luxuries like buying an odd knitting pattern or thing like that. Um, so she couldn't buy any dolls knitting patterns for me for the, to learn. And I was the only one out of the three of us that was interested in doing this. My older sister and my younger sister weren't interested in knitting or anything like that. So she more or less t taught me the basics of how to work out and then how to do a tension, how to get your tension right and measure the stitches from your tension and all that. And that was how I learned to, to knit thing for my dolls at first. But when we're talking about my sisters and that, um, as my older sister, we got a little bit older and my older sister Eleanor left school. Well, that was at 15 in our day. We left school at 15 years of age. Well, then I was left in charge of my younger sister, Linda. And I hated looking after her. I didn't want to take her anywhere with me. But I had to. I was told to. You know, it's, you had to do things like that in uh, those days. And, you know, I used to breathe the living daylight out of my younger sister. And used to tell her, she used to say, I'm going to tell my mum on you. And, and I used to say, well, I'll hit you again if you tell me, mum. Because we didn't want her telling mum the things we were getting up to. Because we had to take her with all our friends and all that, you know, and we didn't want them knowing, her knowing what we were up to and that. And uh, <coughs> Anyway, my sister came up to my house one day and we were talking about knitting and everything. And uh, she said, oh, I remember that. She said, I remember you about your, your knitting the things for your, uh, your dolls and that. And she says, I spoiled one, I pulled the stitches off your needles by mistake one time. She says, you nearly killed me. She says... <laughs> And we were talking, I says, I know, remember, I says, I used to, she says, things I used to do to you was terrible. She says, I know, I still have all the scars to prove what you did to me when we were kids. And, <laughs> and that was how I was telling Anne, that was how I learned. It was a big, long story, actually. The thing was nearly ready to start by the time I finished uh, telling her all these things. So I didn't get as much done in that first half hour as I did in the next two 15-minute breaks that um, we had. But it's nice to talk to somebody who has the same interests as you and can do the same things. Because I've seen Anne, this lady, wearing some of the um, cardigans and sweaters that she's knit herself. And she is a nice nice knitter as well. I might even have a word with her sometime and ask her if she wants to do some little things for me to use up some of my my wool. And maybe get some of the patterns knitted that I haven't got time to do myself. But the only problem is she does live half a way, half an hour away because she lives near where my friend lives and that's a half hour drive for me whenever I go to the bingo up that way. Like. But anyway, that's my little bit for today. So thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you all another time. So bye for now.